Okay, so welcome to our next unit here, all about rational expressions. It is rational expressions. I'm probably going to say radical at some point because I keep mixing up the two. But we are talking about rational expressions. So before we get started here, we need to understand that you cannot divide by zero. Bad things happen if you, uh, if you divide by zero. Once you watch my YouTube videos for next year, you will figure that out. What happens if you do? It's just bad. So what we first need to talk about is non-permissible values. Now, non-permissible value is a value that X or Y or Z or whatever variables you're dealing with, it cannot equal that. So for instance, here, X cannot equal zero. I cannot have this denominator equal zero. This next one, I cannot have the denominator zero, so two y cannot equal zero. Two is never gonna equal zero, so y cannot equal zero. And I can do that for whatever one I'm dealing with, so let's say this one, I would say that two y plus five cannot equal zero. That denominator cannot equal zero. And then solve for what y is, so subtract five, onto both sides, divide by two, so y cannot equal negative five over two. These are your restrictions or non-permissible values. Now these ones are pretty straightforward, but what if I gave you something like this, where I said, this is what you need to, make to find the non-permissible value. The concept, exactly the same. The denominator just can't equal zero, so x squared minus three x minus 28, cannot equal zero. That might seem tricky, but we're gonna dive back into factoring. So I can factor this. What two numbers add to negative three, multiply the negative 24. So that would be x minus seven and x plus four. So this cannot equal zero. And then solve this like you would before. So x cannot equal, I don't want this to equal zero, so it cannot equal seven. I don't want this to equal zero, so it cannot equal negative four. So same kind of non-permissible values for this. The reason why this is important is now I'm gonna get you to solve a question like this, or not solve, but to simplify. So you will be told to simplify this and state the non-permissible values or state the restrictions. So in order to simplify, I need to factor. You need to do a lot of factoring in this unit. So up top, I can factor out a five. I'll be left with this. On the bottom, this is a difference of squares, so I get x plus four, x minus four. Notice, I've got an x minus four on the top, x minus four on the bottom. These cancel, and so I'm left with five over x plus four. So this is my final answer, that's the um, simplified version. I also need to talk about restrictions. So in this case, x cannot equal, and I'm gonna look at where I factored everything. So I still need to talk about the x minus four, even though I factored it out. So in this, x cannot equal negative four, and it cannot equal positive four. So that's the idea with restrictions and simplifying. You're going to need to factor things out. So factor everything and take out what is common between them, and then state any restrictions. So let's move on to the next page here. Now we're gonna multiply some rational expressions. The process, very similar. Uh, actually, I'm gonna do B, because it's slightly more complicated, but the process is gonna be the same. So I'm going to factor it, I'm going to eliminate, and then I'm gonna combine. And I'll show you what that means. So I'm gonna factor at the top here, so I can factor out a two. I get x minus three still in there. Can't factor anything out of the bottom. Times, factor at the top, so what two numbers add to five, multiply to six. So x plus two times x plus three all over what adds to negative one multiplies to this. So I get x minus three, x plus two. Now that I've got this factored, 
what I'm going to do is simplify. So cancel out the like terms, what are on the top, what's on the bottom. So x minus three cancels, x plus two. And the reason why I can do this is because each of these things is times by each other. If they were added or subtracted, I couldn't do this. So what am I left with? Two x plus three over x squared. You don't need to combine these because often at the end you can, you can uh, simplify stuff out. I need to figure out what is my non-permissibles. So look where it is fully factored. So here I have x squared, so x cannot equal zero because x squared can't equal zero. x minus three, I don't want that to be equal to zero, so x cannot equal three. And this one, x cannot equal negative two. So there you go. That is your, um, that is how you would do this one. Again, the steps for this, factor everything out, because you're multiplying these together, factor everything out, cancel what you can cancel, and then simplify. And that's how you go about doing this. That's multiplying rational expressions. If I want to divide, I'm gonna do the, a similar process. There's just gonna be one step at the beginning. Let's do, uh, let's do letter C. I'm just jumping all over the place with these. So if I'm going to do this first, because I'm dividing the second fraction, let's flip this. So I know what I'm dealing with. So I got 15 minus three X over two X times four X plus four over three X minus 15. Okay, now let's factor. So I can factor a three out of this and I get five minus X over two X. I can factor out a four, so I have X plus one and I can factor out a three down here and I get X minus five. Great, so let's simplify some things out. I can cancel a three and a three because again, top and the bottom, they're times everything. Four divided by two, so this I can make that a two and cancel that out. And notice here I've got five minus X and I've got X minus five. These are actually the same thing if I factor out a negative of this. And this is simply using the fact that, um, uh, how do I do this? Five minus X is the same thing as negative X minus five. If you don't believe me, try multiplying the negative into here and you'll get the same thing. So if I cancel these two things out, I'm gonna be left with a negative one here. Again, that just comes from the negative here. So looking at my final answer, I've got uh, negative two x plus one all over x. So this is gonna be my final answer. Again, we need to look at restrictions for this. The restrictions are gonna be a little bit different with this. So I need to look at, at any point in this, my denominator cannot equal zero. So if I looked at the factored one here, here x cannot equal zero because of the x. Here x cannot equal five. But notice, originally, I've got 4x plus 4 in the denominator. I flipped it up top, but from the very beginning, this was also a part of the denominator. So I also cannot have this, 4 times x plus 1. This also is a, um, I need to make sure that this cannot equal 0. So x cannot, can also, uh, cannot be negative 1. Again, Anything that's in the denominator at any point cannot equal zero. So that's the restriction with that. Uh, where am I for time? Nine and a half minutes. So I'm, let's do one that is a little bit more difficult. Let's do this one here. So if I've got this question, it might look freaky at first. It's not too bad. So let's... First flip the fraction, the second fraction. So the first fraction stays the same. Times, flip the second fraction. 
again, we flip that second fraction because we are dealing with um, dividing. So we get this, factor this all out. So what adds to negative nine and multiplies to uh, negative one or positive 142, this would be y minus 16 times y plus seven, right? I think that works. Over, factor this one, so it adds to seven, multiplies to 12, so that's y plus three, y uh, plus four, times, factor this one out, so I can factor out, I cannot put this into two brackets, I just have a greatest common factor. So I've got four y, and that gives me y squared plus, oh, I can factor out a y squared. So this would just be y plus four over, and again, I can just factor out a common factor, which would be three y, which would give us y minus seven. All right. So I've got all this stuff. Since it's all multiplied together, let's take a look at what is common on the top and the bottom. So y plus four, those can cancel. I've got a y squared up top and I've got a y on the bottom. So this y cancels out with one of the y's up top. And that's it. Nothing else is in common. I cannot change this around to make them equal to each other. So that's it. What I'm left with is four y times y minus 16, times y plus seven, over three times y plus three, times y minus seven. So this is my final answer. Is it ugly? Yes, but that is your final answer, and that's totally okay. Next thing I need to look at is what are my restrictions? So y cannot equal, Again, let's look at the fully factored form and see what it cannot equal. So over here, y cannot equal negative three. Look at this bracket, y cannot equal negative four. Look over here, y cannot equal zero. Look here, y cannot equal positive seven. And again, because I was dealing with um, this in the denominator and I flipped it up top, this term as well, that's in the numerator over here, sorry, you can't see that, here, that needs to be, uh, this also cannot equal zero. So y cannot equal zero, already got that. Y cannot equal negative four, already got that. Okay, good. So this is all that I have for restrictions. Okay, so that's it for the chapter one notes for this. Again, the process for this is not too bad. Essentially, when you're trying to simplify these kind of um, operations, whether you're multiplying or dividing, the process is, if you're dividing, first flip the second fraction, factor it. So you're going to need to review how to factor. If you need to go back and watch the factoring videos from the first unit, go back and do that. Cancel out what's in common between them. And then write down what's left and finally write restrictions. So that's the process that you're gonna use with multiplying and dividing rational expressions.